I'll try that again in case the numbers didn't. And welcome to another exciting adventure in the world of exegesis in the epistle of Philemon. It's Wednesday night. We're on number 99. That means we've done 99 previous weeks of Wednesday nights in Philemon. And I'm telling you, it's getting crazy. Um, and we're getting near the end, but not yet. We're almost there. Oh, there's Leonard. Welcome, greetings, and yes, good evening. And so far, so good, but as it's title, you're back. Okay, I'm back and I'm front and I'm shake my leg and all that stuff as well. Um, how goes it uh, there, Leonard? And uh, hopefully uh, some others will join in. I'm, I'm always glad to know that one very special guest is always with us. And uh, tonight you'll see that that's very apparent, very obvious, and uh, absolutely true. Capital T. Um, and I wanted to write down the areas that we're going to get into, but there's so many of them. There's pictures and videos and... Uh, texts and charts and so much stuff that I decided, why don't I just make it a, a, a more simple title? Cold in Middle Tennessee, huh? Um, it's very windy over here. More in whatever you'd call Central Arizona. Uh, my mom is in North Phoenix, Northern Phoenix area, just north of Phoenix in uh, Sun City. Um, temps here were kind of so-so, but I, that's right. I think I did hear that there was going to be really frigid weather in a bunch of places that was kind of a late, uh, winter, whatever you call it, spell for a minute. Cause we are smack dab in the middle. I mean, things are really moving along in the spring department. I'm starting to have all kinds of greenery and, uh, also, flowering the stuff that's supposed to get my allergies going but uh be all that as it may the most important thing is what's going on in real life besides the physical aspects of our atmosphere and uh i'd like to say that it such a shame in some ways and tonight we're going to see the solutions that no one seems to understand. Ha! What a mess. We've got solutions, but nobody knows about them. Nobody's applying them. It's ridiculous. And as I say, what do we do on Monday and Wednesday nights around here? And I don't care if nobody shows up or if 6,000 people show up or uh, 6 billion. It's all good to me. I mean, the main thing is that what we're looking at here tonight is phenomenal. So I'm going to try and get us into it and do it the way I usually do. But I'm just going to start doing that now because if I don't do it now, uh, we're going to get further and further uh, off course. Okay. Off chart. Before I explain this chart, I'm going to show this chart that helps to explain the second one. And the reason I always bring this one up is because of the fact that the stuff that we're going to look at tonight, you're going to see. There's some fun stuff for a change, uh, but there's a lot of other stuff as well. And without the right background, some of this is going to seem really off the wall. And you'll see because already – my second board here, which I think is a, an interesting uh, graphic of a scroll, and it says true things. Grace and the gospel are good news. That's absolutely true. Believe it or not, it's actually absolutely correct. Grace and the gospel 
are good news. Now, and most people, especially if they come in in the middle of this, they're going to say, oh, it's some religious broadcast, or maybe they like that. Um, I don't. And the reason I don't is it says right in the next caption, true or pure Christianity is not a religion. And you know, Christianity comes from Judaism. And true or pure Judaism wasn't a religion either. And then um, if you think that that's not true, well, hear me out. You're going to find out that, that there's something better. Well, actually, religion isn't good at all. And I don't care which one it is. I don't care what you think about it that's good. It isn't. No way, no way, Jose. Now, there is a God, and he expects us to pray. And he has a routine for that. We're going to do that in a minute. We're going to have opening prayer. But this board here talks about how God would expect you to pray. And strangely, most people don't know the procedures. Uh, and in a way, it's not strange there's an answer why they don't follow these procedures. Simple answer, because they don't know. Why don't they know? Ah, that's where the problem lies. Therein lies the problem. Too many people get religious, and they're not theological. They're not biblical. They're also not exegetical, spiritual, and supernatural. And in fact, Religion, and let's call one aspect of it church, because there's church, there's tents, there's, you know, synagogues, there's, uh, um, I forget what all the other ones are called that I'm trying to think of. But that's not important. What's important is they go meet somewhere and they come up with their own uh, rigmarole, their own idea of how things are supposed to go. And that's because of their lack of preparation education, understanding, interpretation, all that kind of stuff. And so tonight you're going to see some why in a slightly different way than other times in the past that we've done. And I hope some people will get around to watching this broadcast and gleaning something from it. Um, we've been in this little epistle of Philemon. And the end is packed with some, some very important um, concepts. And it kind of mushrooms out. And that's why the more I'm looking at things and other things that are going on currently in our zeitgeist, in our, our life, the way we are living in this time, and in this, in particular, in this country, um, the more I'm putting all of that together, the longer it's taking for me to get to the conclusion and end. But I'm going to tell you right now, so that this makes some sense. Um, the the ending section of our text in Philemon, it ends. Well, I, I want to say the the actual last couple verses are verses 22, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, now here's the funny part. We're around verses 21 and 22. Tonight we're going to be hitting 22 if I get two at all. Get it? 22 if I get two at all. Um, 21 says, having confidence in your obedience, I write to you since I know you'll do even more than what I say. People on TV have been acting like that lately. Our current president is telling people just that exactly. That you will do, you should do what I say and even more. How about that for a comment? And that's an exegetical comment because I was able to, to interpret that and it didn't take much, believe me. And all I had to do was hear the words and put them together and realize that's what was being basically purported. Uh, I know that you will do even more than what I say. And 
you know, you don't really know. And uh, yeah, I see. Oh, I, you know what? I didn't put the previous comments. I'm gonna put this one on. Um, <clears throat> it's more than sad. It's a travesty. It's absolutely stupid. It's insane. Um, and we're going to hear some of it because I want to play some parts, um, some video from Newsmax. And I don't know who gets to watch Newsmax, but between NTD, which stands for New Tang Dynasty, uh, a group of American, uh, you know, Chinese folks who are definitely conservative and American all the way and uh, believe in our country and our way of life, our system. Well, the way of life is changing. They believe in the old way of life. And so my, my take on all of this is people like these Chinese Americans and the New Tang Dynasty channel and other channels like Right Side Broadcasting Network, so uh, that tells you they're on the right, and there happen to be, I guess you could also say, in the right. And other stations, uh, let's see. So there's New Tang Dynasty, RSBN, um, the one that we're going to be looking at, Newsmax, and others. And they give us a lot of info that you're not getting on every other, all of them, all the other stations. It's ridiculous. And, uh, but that's the way things are. And I'm going to show you some things on that tonight. Now, I mentioned versus uh, basically that we're dealing with 21 and 22. obedience. I write to you since I know that you will do even more than what I say. And here is the, the last part in verse 22. We're going to see something based on a couple of the words. Uh, one of them, well, first of all, verse 22. And at the same time, also prepare me a lodging. In other words, prepare for me to come. I just got a call here from somebody who keeps trying to get me to talk to them about their coming and they didn't realize they're coming at a time where I'm not available. So, and I don't even have time to get back to them. Uh, and I will here a, a momentarily, uh, probably tomorrow because only my Sunday through Wednesdays are really booked up. And then all I have left is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And usually those are all taken up with odds and ends. Sometimes Saturday is also part of my preparation uh, for including Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, anyway, I, I digress. Verse 21, again, having confidence in your obedience, I write to you since I know that you will do even more than what I say. It must be important. I keep repeating it. Verse 22, and at the same time, also prepare me a lodging for I hope that through your prayers, I shall be and it says here, given to you or given to you all. But we're going to see the word there for given to you all, that compound. And we're also going to see something about the, uh, the prayers. And so that's where we are in Philemon. But tonight, via the notes, we're also going to end up in Job. And I'm telling you, this stuff is, is a little bit all over the place. And when I decided uh, that I was also going to talk a little bit about critical race theory, have you seen this publication? And this particular article, which is March of 2021, uh, it comes out every couple of months. So this is the latest edition. We're going to be finding out a lot of things and it all relates. Oh, excuse me. I just dropped something. All relates to our passage. And so I am going to that.
But before we do, we got to take a moment here uh, and prepare ourselves. And so on this board, I've got stuff behind it. And you can see there's even a one, two, three, four over here. This board is what we're going to focus on for a moment now as we prepare, because if you're not able to understand in great detail what I'm talking about, there's going to be one of two reasons. One is you're not a, quote, believer. I'm going to get my fingers there in the, in the uh, camera range. Um, or you're a believer who's out of fellowship. We're going to be seeing quite a bit about that. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to mention for anybody who does not have a relationship with the God of the universe and doesn't know that uh, he sent a Messiah, and Messiah just means an anointed one. It's Mashiach in Hebrew. It's Christos in Greek. And very union, Christos or Mashiach, uh, and also filled with the Holy Spirit and indwelt by the God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, by faith alone in Christ alone. Um, you don't have to read the Bible, know the Bible, go to church, quit sinning, give money, do anything else. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It has everything to do with simply accepting a gift, which is why Christmas is all about presents. We got a present from God on the first Christmas. And every day ever since, it's been available to everyone. So we're going to take a moment now for silent prayer. You get to choose where you are and what to do. And so without further ado, I'm going to say, uh, let us pray. Thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for your grace for this time together to uh, ton and notice and chronicle and get details. And I pray that it will be both comprehend, you know, comprehensive and comprehensible, uh, that it'll come together in a way that we can understand a lot and use whatever we need of it and benefit by it as well as help others to benefit from it all. Uh, any others that we have con that we come into contact with or have associations with, because um, there's a lot of information tonight that I'm going to have to try to edit it somehow. But I know that all of these things are absolutely pertinent. They're apropos. And our text in Philemon is the, uh, the foundation for it all. So thank you for the time now and for the things we're about to study. Please make them a source of blessing and challenge and uh, help us to really burn it in our souls and that I can present as much of it as well as possible. And we thank you for all these things. We ask them, B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach, in Christ's name, amen. And so tonight uh, we continue... Where we laugh, last left off, laughed less often, less oft, where we uh, left off last, <laughs> so many ways to say that, um, I had mentioned there were six points under major point seven in uh, of refreshment. And we've been seeing a lot of things about refreshment and that a lot of it re refers to the way we think. So the refreshment is connected to mental attitudes. And uh, when we left off last time, the last point, point six under major point eight was when you are thinking divine viewpoint under normal circumstances, you should continue thinking under you know, and be able to think, keep thinking divine viewpoint under great pressure and great emotional circumstances. Now, funny enough, that was last Wednesday night. And somehow on Saturday and Sunday, I went through some great pressure that was emotional because it was physical. Uh, and so uh, the physical pain of it, all definitely it did mine but somehow 
I made it through the Saturday and Sunday uh, issues with my uh, my new friend, as my uh, masseuse told me yesterday. I went to chiropractor and massage, and the masseuse was pushing on my uh, the what is it called the sciatic nerve, and and you know therapeutically helping it. And she's real funny because she also has the problem. So she said to me, this is your sciatic nerve. Uh, say hello. <laughs> Welcome uh, your nerve and, uh, you know, get up the nerve. Uh, she was very funny. But anyway, um, I got some help and I realized that, again, divine viewpoint is what made the day. And Sunday... Had an effective therapy that also has side effects. And by Monday, I was able to get out of that mess and off of that stuff. And by Tuesday, get some more good therapy. And by today, I'm doing so much better that it's amazing. But the problem still persists. I'll have to keep working on it, such as stretches and stuff of the uh, what's called the piriformis where you kind of bend your knee a certain way and hold your foot a certain way and feel that pressure on the backside and stretch it out and then do the other side. This is going to be a lifelong thing for me. Now, continuing from where we left off in Philemon, um, we have heard about a couple of different kinds of tests and one of them was people testing. And we mentioned Euodia and Sin. that were having problems uh, in their church in Laodicea. And Paul had written to them about how to handle their problem. And I took some pictures. I'm going to see if I can pull them up. I never get to um, practice this until we're live. And so I have a hard time in that I have to get all of this stuff. So let's see, where do I go? I think I go to this section and let me see if I can open this up. Oh, I know what I have to do. I have to put them on the screen. I'm gonna, yeah, here we go. For tonight, um, the picks, let me see which ones are which. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna put these picks on the uh, the desktop so I can get to them and share them with you. Uh, so let's see. Still having problems finding this stuff. Hold on a sec. Let me see. Can I get to that? Oh yeah. Look how I got to do this. All right. Will, will this work? Let's see. I got to get to the actual picks. Oh yeah. Now they're on the desktop. Shoot. Hold on. I'm going to try and pull one up and see if you can see this. Um, let me see if I can get this up. I'm so sorry that I'm having to learn how to do this while I'm doing it, but it's about the only way I can do it. I haven't figured out a way to do it while I'm not on the air. Yeah, that is not working. Okay, I'm going to have to do it differently here. Hold on a sec. I've been very fortunate so far. I've been able to do this, but apparently this time, it's not working the same. Hold on. Let me try and pull these back in. See if I can get it this way. Ooh, I only got one. Okay, hold on. I have five picks here, and I just put one of them where it didn't need to go. Okay, good. The five are there. All right, now I'm going to open these up and see if I can somehow get these up for you to see. Hold on. We're, we're getting somewhere. And uh, you'll see why I did this and why I'm trying to get it to where you can see this now. All right, so let's close this particular picture. Let me see, does that mean I only have four? Yeah, that'll work. All right, now let me see if I can pull them up for you in the share mode. 
Um, okay. I may still have a problem. Ah, it looks like it may get better. Let's see. Hold on. Ah, there it is. Okay, good. All right. Now I just have to know which one is which. So hang on a sec. Let me see. I need, let's see. Uh, yeah, Euodia and Syntyche, Philippians 4, 2. And I'm going to show it to you the straight way first. I was wishing I can see the number. Oh, yeah, there it is. It shows the number, 4285. All right. I might be able to get this going yet. 4285. Here we go. All right. We're getting somewhere. All right. Now, on top in English, we see Philippians 4.2. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to live in harmony in the Lord. In the Greek here, you see Euodion parakalo, and that's Euodia, I urge. Kai means and. And uh, sutekane, or suntukain, sorry. Suntukain, that's syntyche. And by the way, I want you to notice this, that in this particular case with syntyche, the U there, suntukain. Yeah, suntukain, suntu, oh, whoops, yeah, I got it right, suntukain. The U's become Y's. And let me show you that when you see in English over here, S-Y-N-T-Y-C-H, that would be S-U-N-T-U-C-H, the key there. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me uh, put this one up here because I'm still trying to get used to writing down. I skipped the other one uh, that says, no problem, we understand. <laughs> but I'm moving. And you're starting to see now. I'm, you know, I'm not always good at this just yet because it's a little bit hard for me. Um, because watch, we're gonna take this one out, and I'm gonna give you up here. There is a uh, like a one and a next to the word live in Philippians four two. And what I'm gonna do is go back. So let's stop that screen, and now share. The next one that I need, let me check which one I need, which would be, oh yeah. And um, this one, okay, uh, 4286 will show you what I want you to see next. Um, see, those are the numbers of the actual pictures. All right, here we go. Share this one. All right, now in this one, there, I have the the one and the A highlighted, and in the highlight, it shows you that in Philippians four two, that translation, you know, I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to live in harmony in the Lord. It doesn't say live; it actually says be of the same mind. Now, the word is covered here because of the little note, but it says over in Philippians 2.2, 2, it also uses the same word. And that's why I'm going to show you the other pictures here. So let's remove that picture, go back and get the next ones. Let me see if I can figure this out uh, by guessing, and I think I can. Um Let's see. That was eight six. Let's try. Um, I'm trying to see if I need. Yeah, let's go with four. Okay, on this one, I got the bottom uncovered here, so you can see this word. Uh, it's the left word there, phronane. It's weird because it's Greek, right? And parakalo is highlighted. And look, parakaleo from parakaleo is a, uh, it's a verb. It's a compound verb. It's got the preposition para and the verb kaleo blended together. Para is a preposition that means alongside, like when we say a paradox, it's something that's alongside something else, you know, it's, and doxy is, uh, I'm not going to get into the details of that one. But how about if I said uh, uh, parallel? It's alongside something else. Um, uh, let's see, paradigm. 
It's one kind of thing next to another one, and they're different. They're two different paradigms. Para means alongside, and there are other, you know, really great words uh, that we use in English. Para kaleo, kaleo is to be called or to call. And in this case, it means to call alongside. Now, um, here as a first singular present active indicative, it also can mean, and, and not just kaleo to call alongside, I'm sorry, to call, it, it is with para to call alongside. So another way to translate to call alongside would be to urge, um, to exhort, to comfort, to come alongside, okay? So here it says, you know, I'm urging uh, the, the two ladies, and I'm going to go back to that so that you can see the urging word, but it says, uh, you, you owe Odia Parakalo. Soon to cane parakalo. So uh, I urge you to, you know, to comfort each other, to kind of get back together, to get along. And then it says alta fronane. What that's saying is same fronane thinking. Okay, in the Lord, uh, I'm urging you to have the same thinking. You two have the same thinking as the Lord or the same thinking in the Lord, the way the Lord is thinking. Okay. So, uh, when it says here to live in harmony in the Lord, it's really saying to be of the same mind. And what we're really saying is that word phronane is to really be thinking the same way, the same thinking. So now, uh, let me see, I can stop that and go back. Uh, one more time. I think I have one more shot. Uh, or did I get rid of it? Let's see. Hold on. I think it's still there. Let's try. Which one did I just have? I'm looking to see if I had if I had five, I need four. Yeah, let me get four. Yeah, there it is. So now you can see uh Euodion Parakalo. So I urge, you know, uh Euodia, come alongside and Kai. Uh, uh, syntyche in English, I urge, and then it says to autophronain, which is to same thinking, be of the same mind in the Lord. Okay, now we do not have this going on in our country right now, do we? In any stretch of the imagination, I want to show one more text if I'm doing the right one. Uh, let me see. It's got the box on top. So, yeah, there's um, this top part where it says uh, "fronete," which is the way it's written right there, and it says to be wise. How about that? To be wise. Uh, in this case, in Philippians two two, it, it's. Uh, it's saying something else. In fact, I'll read Philippians 2 2. And anybody who wants to go there, uh, if you can get there fast enough, because we're going to go real quick on this. In Philippians 2 2, the same exact word is used, the meaning uh, phroneo, to think the same thing. But in 2 2, it says, Make my joy complete by being of the same mind. See, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. And there, you see, it's to be wise, to think that same smart stuff, uh, the same love, having, and then uh, uh, sum, let's see, what is that word? Uh, sum, sukhoi. Uh, oh, with soul. What does that translate in English? Sum, sukhoi. Uh, same mind, maintain the same love, united in spirit. There we go. That's what that sumsukoi, united in spirit. And then it says ta en frunontes, frununtes. If I got that right, frununtes. And so the last part of it there, united in spirit, intent on one purpose, having the same mind. So there's our word froneo. And you can see it up here where it says fro, fronete, 
froneo, and then it shows uh, the phi or phi rho eta noon, and that would be pronounced frain. So that root frain is where we get the verb froneo to be of the to be wise, to be of the same mind, to think you know uh, objectively, and fronete is here showing it's a verb. It's the second person plural present active subjunctive. Now, in this case, in Philippians 2, 2, where he says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind. He is making, it's a, a, a request. It's an entreaty. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the exact uh, term for it because it is a particular type of entreaty a, an entreaty of polite request. And at the same time, even though it's a request, it's subjunctive because um, Paul does not know if they'll do it or not. So he puts it in the subjunct subjunctive mood. All right. So we're seeing the connection of these two, the same type of word in two locations, Philippians 4.2, Philippians 2.2. And um, let me see from my notes here. So when it says there's two things going on, one is we have two mature believers falling flat on their face or faces, and that's Euodia and Syntyche. You don't want to be this, you know, this type. Okay. The second analogy is to other people, Philemon and Onesimus. Now, Paul is writing to Philemon about Onesimus, and he wants the two of them to do the same thing that we see in Philippians 2 2 and 4 2, where Paul tells Euodia and Syntyche in 4 2. And then in 2 2, he is just talking to the Philippians in general, the Philippian congregation. But so you can see that this idea in one case, Euodia and Syntyche, they fall on their faces, and they're two mature believers. Whereas in the second illustration with Philemon and Onesimus, pretty much we're confident, and Paul says he is, he, he, he verbalizes it, he writes it, um, he's confident that Philemon will pass this people test, and, and in that case, those two people, Philemon and Onesimus, will be two winners. And they are winners. They're not just mature. They pass this difficult task. And as I mentioned, uh, I just had a sort of difficult test this weekend. And uh, it's going to be a while. It may take the rest of my life to pass this thing. And uh, Here's another uh, good note that says, yes, this is cool stuff. Very serious. So we see that stability and impact from doctrine circulating in the stream of consciousness of the heart, the cardia, which is where epinosis is, it is in the right lobe of the soul. The left lobe, let's call it the brain, the right lobe, the, the heart, but it's really the heart that's above the brain, not the physical pump. And that heart refers to the heart of man. And not the, but what are you thinking in your soul? And human interaction demands problem solving devices. And remember, we're in, we've had the doctrine of refreshment. And then we've had the revised doctrine of refreshment and the doctrine of mental attitude. We've been hitting lots of doctrines, <laughs> excuse me, and we're going to continue. The order of the day is the soul. And so now I'm going to repeat the points one through four that, um, that we hit a, a little while back. I guess it was last week. Uh, I want you to hear those kind of in passing, kind of a brief review. And uh, this is going to be now 
let me see if I got this right. Yeah, dealing with this issue of human interaction that demands the use of the 10 problem solving devices that we need to know the 10 problem solving devices. And most people don't. And I also have those available. Let me see how easily accessible those are. Um, I think I know where it is. You see it? Oh, nope, that's the Royal Family Honor Code. All right, I don't have it, the 10 problem solving devices. Ah, I do, but it's not already um, as a graphic. It is, if I can grab it real quick here, let me see if I've got it. How close am I to, here we go. This chart on the 10 problem solving devices, let me uh, exit this screen. And there we notice it just says at the bottom, PSDs one to three, RBD, FHS, FRD. You got to know that that's rebound, filling of the Holy Spirit and the faith rest drill. See, if you know your doctrines, then you understand problem solving devices one, two, and three, four, five, and six, grace orientation, doctrinal orientation, and the problems. Uh, see, what is it? Uh, hold on a sec here. Let me pull that one up so that I got it. Um, the, let me get it up close. Okay. Grace orientation, doctrinal orientation, and the PSOD part stands for the personal sense of destiny. Okay. Then, um, you move up to seven, eight, and nine where P S or PSD's part problem solving devices lg is the um let's see where am i the personal love for god ulm is the unconditional love for man and plus h is sharing god's happiness see so all this is a part of the problem solving devices what's the last one number 10 the spiritual winner occupation with christ now, when you get to that point, you get escrow blessings in time. And as you can see the red line, what happens is from salvation and from physical birth at X and then salvation at Y, when you get to Z, it's physical death. At that point, you get escrow blessings in eternity, all the blessings that you're going to be getting in eternity. And so the 10 problem solving devices. And I have this particular diagram that shows for the prototype divine dinosphere. I'll tell you what that means if for those who don't know. Um, the divine dinosphere is God's power realm. The prototype was when the Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth. He was the first one to live in and have this divine dinosphere. And so... What happens there is you see the first one doesn't apply to Jesus Christ because he never sins. So he doesn't have to rebound. First John 1, 9. Uh, the 10th one, occupation with Christ. It's automatic. He is Christ. Okay, so there you see the rest of them, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, and nine in yellow. The 10 problem solving devices. A in the pro divine dinosphere, uh, the very first person to have these problem solving devices, and he had no old sin nature. Uh, he was born sinless, and all he had to do was stay sinless. But easy for us to say, right? All he had to do, uh, but he did it. And the resurrection is the proof. So we continue. Um, I am going to review. That point one of the four points we covered last week, the instability of personal love is the source of many problems in human interaction. See, if you don't have these problem-solving de devices and you don't have integrity from a position of strength where you have impersonal love, 
which is way up the, the chain on the spiritual development. Uh, um, you get a lot of albums, <laughs> and many of them are self-induced. Uh, you produce them by your, excuse me, your own bad decisions, conflict and antagonisms, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Euodia and Syntyche, and the potential with Philemon and Onesimus, arrogance and jealousy. Think about uh, where can you have problems at a party? How about arrogance and jealousy? Women at parties, they can do that. Men too, but uh, all all kinds of problems at parties. Everybody wants to go to a party and little, you know, do they think? And um, you could be having arrogance and jealousy over your concern. Um, let's say concerns over job stability and all kinds of uh, inordinate ambition and uh, competition. And if you're a weak believer, that's a problem. If you're a strong believer, well, then that's no problem. Guess what? Guilt. You don't like a team that, let's say in sports that the pastor likes or vice versa, so you leave the church. I know that sounds stupid, but people do stuff like that. And there's disorientation, there's marital problems, interactions, problems with people, problems with self. So uh, I'm gonna quickly go on to, yeah, if you're single, you need doctrine. Of course, if you're married, you need more doctrine. And you usually should have more doctrine to be married, so there, um, it helps. Uh, you need it to continue to stabilize the relationship. Now, familiarity breeds contempt. I mentioned that. Point two, the pressures of human antagonism, hostility, and animosity demand a problem-solving device. I'll repeat that for anybody that would see this in the future and has not seen what we were doing in the past. Point two, the pressures of human antagonism and hostility and animosity Things like that demand a problem-solving device. Point three, demand the use of the problem-solving devices. Point three, the problems of personal love and romance and friendship demand problem-solving devices. You know, these problems come up and PSDs, problem-solving devices, that's your answer. Point four, in both cases, okay, pressures of human animosity or like personal love and romance, the problem-solving device is the function of impersonal love on the part of the spiritual adult. And remember, we've talked about the difference between impersonal love and personal love. Personal love is you focus on an object and, and it's you do, I mean, you love personally. Impersonal love puts the emphasis on you, on the subject, again. But now the focus is on the subject. Impersonal love is you doing the loving, regardless of the integrity or lack of integrity on the part of the object of love. So uh, again, pers impersonal love on the part of the spiritual adult is what you have to resolve a problem. So now that was the first four points and we can continue. If you say, what are those four points from? Um, we're dealing in this section with, again, this revised doctrine of refreshment. And so in the doctrine of refreshment, you you need certain faculties. It's like saying you have to have a college degree in engineering to go get a, a job at uh, Texas Instruments as an electrical engineer. All right, so there are pre prerequisites. And so continuing here with point six in this revised doctrine of refreshment, check this out. A believer who's all screwed up, a loser believer. Okay, so they're a believer, but they don't act like one. Okay, the loser manufactures his own problems, but it has no problem-solving devices to cope with life. To do that, 
demands phroneo. And that's the word we were looking at uh, to deal with objective thing in Philippians 2.2 2 and Philippians 4.2. Okay, now, the reason I'm bringing all this up, you say, well, how does it, what does this have to do with Philemon? Well, when it says um, in verse 21, having confidence in your obedience, I write to you since I know that you will do even more than what I say. Well, when we look at the Greek, and I'm going to grab my wonderful uh, Greek-English interlinear, you'll see that in our verse, where it says to have the, uh, let's see, where am I? 21, and then 22. Oh, hold on a sec. Oh, I thought that that word was being used in verse 21, and yet I didn't see the word thinking. It said confidence. And so I, uh, it led to our other verse to Philippians 4 2 and then 2 2. So, but anyway, um, God wants you to cope 99% of the time. And how do you do that with that Philippians 4, 2 and 2, 2 and from that word? Impersonal love toward all. And again, that's where in verse 21, when he says, having confidence in your obedience. And then he says, since I know you'll do even more than what I say. So he is confident, Paul, that Philemon will have the objective thinking and will apply, quote, impersonal love to all. See, I'm connecting it eventually. It just, uh, point seven, inevitably, the believer with no problem solving devices becomes a casualty in life, gets all his kicks from sublimation, avoids, and becomes divorced from reality, and all too often becomes psychotic or neurotic. Okay, we have that in spades right now uh, in our current zeitgeist. Point uh, eight, three out of four momentum tests in life all require impersonal love. And here's three examples of kinds of tests. Okay. People testing. Talking about that. How about thought testing? We've talked about that. How about system testing? Uh -huh. Certainly going on in many different ways, in many different systems, in our government, in our jobs, in our families, in our schools, in, our, in countries, in healthcare, you name it. We've got these weird issues. Now watch this. In evidence testing, so I mentioned people, thought, and system. Here's a fourth one, evidence testing. Think about evidence. Think about court. Job was going into the courtroom, literally in the, the throne room of God. Okay, was he going there? No, Job wasn't actually going there. He was on earth. But Satan was there and in the throne room of God in the, in the trial for the angelic conflict, Satan was making, saying, uh, have you, uh, what do you think, you know, with these problems with Job, when God had asked him in that courtroom hearing, have you seen my, you know, uh, witness for the prosecution job you haven't heard it said that way but when he says you know when god says to satan what about my servant job that's what he's saying and in other words god is calling on his witness job and here's what happens so job was going into evidence testing 
and being entered as evidence and point nine in testing in spiritual maturity that we understand from the beginning that that's where Job is in his life. Impersonal love is the solution. Now, how does that work? That's why we're going to be looking at Job. Uh, Job prayed for them, his four different friends, three of them spoke. So, but then the fourth one finally pops up. And so if you know the story, the three friends, uh, there's uh, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, and you can either pronounce it Elihu or Elihu, but E-L-I, -E -L -I, like Eli or Eli, um, it means ale, and then the I on the end is, is me or my in this case. So it would mean God and my, my God, and guess what? What? Who? Now, I told you we were going to have a moment uh, of uh, entertainment and light, uh, sweetness and light. I am going to pull this up now. Hmm. Let me get this out. I didn't realize I put it this way, but I think I can pull this off and not screw it up. I have a board here that I made for you. It's one of the things why I said I don't have room on the on this backboard tonight. Here is something that we wanted to hit tonight. It's a a thing in both it should be it's biblical so it should be in church but most people will never hear this in church i did because i went to a doctrinal church where they teach the bible isagogically categorically and exegetically and we had a sentence on the bottom there see where it says she is he he is who who is me and dog d-a-g dog is fish now i think that's very apropos these days with all that's going on in the stupidity of our zeitgeist. Um, here's what we've got. On the top there, you can see that our English word she is, and there's Hebrew squiggles translated. It sounds like this, uh, he. It's a, uh, a hey, and then we've got uh, the, uh, the alphabet letters, the, the vowels and other letters that become the word he. But what does he say in Hebrew? It says she. He is she. And so I pulled this up. Let me see, where, where did I put it right now? I've got so many books out and stuff everywhere. All right, here we go. I've got this part. I need another thing. Where's my clipboard? Oh, it's over there. Hold on, I got to go get the clipboard. You see if that will stay put. No way that's going to stay. That's going to fall over. There. <laughs> I've got it that way. Um, all right. Hebrew dictionary handy. And my clipboard. This is Brown Driver Briggs. He even says Gesenius. Hebrew English lexicon. We call it Brown Driver Briggs there at the bottom. And what I want you to see is that that word he is on page, let's see, it's on this page, 214, uh, quadrant D. And I'm going to show it to you here. Again, see, I could have done a whole lot of charts and stuff. I decided to make it easy. And where my finger is here, and I'm going to come up. Word. Let me make it nice and big. And so there's a hey, a vav, and an olive, and I circled the number. And if you could read that, it would say underneath there that it translates to, let's see, where is it? Okay, pronoun of the third person singular, he or she. And you're going to see how it's different when it's she. How? These two different ways, let me get this up here. This one and this one are the difference between he and she. It's he and, let me see if I can see it. Um, 
who, he and who. Now, let me show it to you back on our fun board. And I won't bother you with the rest of it because there's two more. But just so that you see the difference between he and who. So who the uh, Hirik Yod is what makes it an E sound, he. But here you have an Uric. You have a Vav with a dot in it. And so the hey, that first letter, and hey, this becomes he, and that becomes who. And the Aleph at the end is silent. It's a silent A. So uh, funny that she is he, and he is who. And in English, who is this Hebrew word? This is the M, Mame, and here we go again, like he, it's me. See, so here you're actually seeing that dot and the yod, and here, here a dot and the yod, and they make for the E and E. And so you have she is he, he is who, who, meaning in English, like uh, in derogative pronoun, who is me in Hebrew. So she is he in English, he is who in English, who is me in English, and fish is, and here's the word for fish. It's dalit with an A underneath it, a vowel, silent olive, and a G at the end, D-A-G. So you got to spell it D-A-G, like dog. Okay, so, but that's the word in Hebrew for fish. And you know what they say in uh, Job, or I mean in uh, uh, Jonah, where uh, he gets swallowed by a whale? No, it's not a whale. It's a dog gadol. A fish, great. So the word is dog. That's our word. And that means he was swallowed by a great fish. That's Hebrew. That's what it says in the book. It doesn't say he got swallowed by a whale. See, of course, we turn it into an idea. Oh, it must have been a big thing like a whale. You know, well, we don't know what it was, but it was a big fish. We do know that. Maybe the the Hebrews at the time didn't know what it was, and they called the whale a big fish. So the sentence becomes, she is he, he is who, who is me, and dog is fish. Well, that's the kind of stuff I would learn at church. I didn't have to go to seminary and learn Hebrew and learn this. I learned this just in a regular church down the street. Why? Because the church taught Greek and taught Hebrew, taught history, taught culture, taught theology. You know, how, how did the Greeks during the time of Christ and the apostles, what were they thinking theologically? How was it different in the Old Testament? How was it with the did they have? Remember, they were in a different era. This is why this stuff is important. Anyway, I told you I didn't have the space on the board to put all of this and stuff like this that we're trying to cover. So we continue, okay? And you can see now how I'm tying this together. Uh, in point eight, three out of four momentum testing in life or momentum tests all require impersonal love. People testing, thought testing, system testing, and in evidence testing, Job was going into the courtroom as evidence. Uh, point nine, even in evidence testing, in spiritual maturity, this impersonal love is the solution. Job prayed for these four friends of his. Uh, he had capacity for friendship. And so at this point, I want to take a second and pass it. I'm trying to see if I kept my mark here. I didn't. So, but I know where it is. Let me see if I put it. Where is my board? All right. Job. And I think it's around 30. I want to say 32. I'll tell you real quick. So if you'll turn with me to Job chapter. 32. Actually, and 31 as well, Job concludes he justifies himself. And his three friends have absolutely ripped him up. 
one side and down the other, saying that he must have done some horrible sin. And um, Job said, I can't believe you guys. I can't believe that you guys think I didn't. You know me so well. So in chapter 32, this is interesting because we get the monologue of the fourth person who's been quiet up to now. And there was a reason that he stayed quiet. So Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar um, really chewed Job out. And finally, uh, Elihu is going to tell them uh, a piece of divine uh, wisdom. And he claims to be God's spokesman on behalf of his righteousness. Uh, and that would be chapter 33. Now, in 32, it says, verse 1, Then these three men ceased answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. But the anger of, of the family of Ram burned against Job. Uh, his anger burned because he justified himself before God. So he was mad at Job because of that. Um, it says, and uh, his anger burned against Job's three friends because the other older guys, because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. So he could even see the reason for Job's consternation. And in verse four, it says, now Elihu had waited to speak to Job because they were years older than he. See, he was a whoopersnapper, and so he let the all the religious uh, powwow guys talk. Verse 5, when Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, his anger burned. So Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Buzite, spoke out and said, I am young in years and you are old. Therefore, I was shy and afraid to tell you what I think. I thought age should speak and increased years should teach wisdom. But it is a spirit in man. But here I, I have it translated. Uh, but it is God, the Holy Spirit, and the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. Verse 9, the abundant in years may not be wise, uh, nor may elders understand justice. Now, I'm bringing this up again, what we have going on in our country. And I had a bunch of videos that I wanted to play for you from today, <coughs> excuse me, talking about the lack of wisdom Cheers. Um, of all of these people who are supposed to be wise, rulers, leaders, and they're really messing up. So uh, he says, um, so I say, listen to me. I too will tell what I think. Behold, I waited uh, for your words and I listened to your reasonings while you pondered what to say. Verse 12, I even paid close attention to you. Indeed, there was no one who refuted Job, meaning who proved he was wrong. Okay, these three were chewing them out. It says, not one of you who answered his words. Um, verse 13. Oh, by the way, not one of you who. That word who, okay? It's our English word who. Which one is it? It's the word. One of you who answered his words. <coughs> that word who is the word me. So if you look in that verse, you'll see the word me. I just thought since it came up, I might as well mention it. So there was no one who refuted Job, not one of you who answered his words. Verse 13, do not say we have found wisdom. God will rout him out. We will rout him, uh, not man. Uh, verse 14, for he has not arranged his words against me. Uh, nor will I reply to him with your arguments. And there's a, a, a note for that word arguments. It's really uh, words. So the word words. 
davar. No, nor will I reply to him with your davar, davarim, actually. Um, verse 15, they are dismayed. Uh, they answer no more words. And shall I wait because they do not speak, because they stop and answer no more? I too will answer my share. I also will tell my opinion, for I am full of words. The spirit within me constrains me. Behold, my belly is like unvented wine, like new wineskins. It is about to burst. Now, here's the viewpoint of every faithful pastor teacher. Verse 20. Let me speak that I may get relief. Let me open my lips and answer. Let me now be partial to no one. So the role of the pastor teacher is to be impartial. We're supposed to have judges and politicians right now that should be impartial. Okay, so let me now be partial to no one, nor flatter any man. Verse 22, for I do not know how to flatter, else my maker would soon take me away. In the chapter, chapter 33, uh, Elihu continues, he claims to be God's spokesman on behalf of his, meaning God's righteousness. And he goes a long way to try to justify to the extent that, that Job was justified, because Job wasn't perfect either. Uh, he fell sort of short, flat on his face. Um, but... The reason I'm bringing all this up, point 10, you'll never get away from the fact that you have no permanent solutions, in other words, stability, to the problems of human relationships until you reach spiritual adulthood. And so verse 11, so until spiritual adulthood, what? What do you do? Okay, you must fall back on one, rebound. Three, humility, which is respect for authority, which is grace orientation. And here comes the next very important principle, point 12. Impersonal love is a problem solver in antithetical categories of human relationships. So again, these problem solving devices, and we saw the 10 of them. And when I told you that... Uh, uh, seven, eight, and nine were in yellow here. And you see this one, eight, impersonal love for man. I-L, as I always write it, impersonal love. That one is, is really key. And you can see that when you have gotten to the point where you have integrity in your own soul and therefore impersonal love for man, then you're able to deal with problems and you solve them. These antithetical categories of human relationships and you solve them through integrity, which is a byproduct and result of impersonal love. Point 13, <clears throat> impersonal love is a problem solver for both love and hate. So check this out, admiration and animosity. There's the, and anti, uh, I want to say antithetical, but the antithesis of each other. Admiration, animosity. Uh, here's another good illustration, friends, enemies. So, impersonal love, unconditional guarantee if believers who in spiritual adulthood are able to maintain an honorable and virtuous relationship with friends and enemies, okay? Um, oh, I said if, I meant of. I realized it started looking like I needed another clause. Where's my pencil? And let me repeat that because that's a really good one and I'm going to say it right. Where is that? Yeah, it's, it's O-F, not I-F. Okay, point 14, impersonal love is the unconditional guarantee of believers, see there, of believers who in spiritual adulthood are able 
to maintain an honorable and virtuous relationship with friends and enemies. And I have a quote from Richard Lovelace who, who said, I love thee here so much, love thy not honor more. All right, let me see how many more points. We're at 15. We got 23 points. I'm going to try to trudge along here. Well, let me see something. No, I'll stop here on this point at point 15. Let me put this in here. And the reason is because I want to go over to a couple of clips or picks. Let me see which ones. Um, let me see which ones are which. Yeah, we've got some videos here uh, that I think are pretty serious. Um, you know, again, dealing with our subject, there is so much ridiculous stuff happening that shouldn't be happening at all. And I'm going to show you, let me see if I can go into this deal here. Uh, let's see. I want, oh, I hit the wrong button. There we go. What? is going on trying to get to the share thing what does that say hmm interesting i'm still learning the software all right so i want to share screen i want to go to the application i want to get to a Hmm. Guess what? I still don't always understand how to do this, but I'm learning. All right, I got one. I think I've got one that I can do here. Let me see if I can open this up. I want you to see this particular deal. Yeah, yeah, here we go. All right. I thought you might like to uh, see this. Let me make it uh, nice and full screen. The following content has been identified by the YouTube community as inappropriate or offensive to, okay, whoever. Notice down here, Chip Roy from Texas, in rage after Biden caught in disgusting effort to block GOPs uh, over Maxine Waters. Therefore, uh, it is identified as inappropriate or offensive. I'm making a point here. If that's the case, and I guess I got to get over to the side here where you can see me again, um, then this following video is a problem. So uh, let's see what problem we have. Okay, the first thing I want you to see is... All right, I showed you that. I'm going to show you the clips. All right, here we go. Uh, this is interesting. We're going to see now. Again, viewer discretion advised because it's offensive. How long you think show the way you preach? It's interesting when you look at the um, sort of the, the very, you know, the minimum how long they could sentence somebody for a minimum and a maximum. Um, what do you think Chauvin is actually looking at when he is sentenced eight weeks from now? I think he's the sacrificial lamb here. I mean, he's going, they're going to throw the books at him, uh, the book at him. And I think it's going to, uh, I think this is going to be one of those where we're not going to be stunned by, you know. All right. Uh, sacrificial lamb. Doesn't that sound like a spiritual, religious, biblical concept? Uh, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you, uh, when you see these next clips, 
Uh, let's try this one. Let me see if I can pull this one up. I'm going to open it up and I got to figure out what I'm doing here so that I can see the stuff I'm looking for. All right. I, oh, wait a second. I have to actually get that on the desktop, I think. All right, here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this little clip. And again, this is Newsmax. Oh, I see. I took it out of the, I took it out of its place now. And now I can't see it. What if I go to desktop? Can I get it from there? Yep. All right, open. Yeah, okay. I'm figuring out ways to do this. <laughs> Takes me a minute. Again, viewer discretion advised. Here we go. Uh, these three, it's confusing when you look at the. Okay, I'm. All right, so that was Judge Peter Cahill reading the first uh, three good. guilty verdicts yesterday about 5.02 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.02 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Derek Chauvin found guilty on all three charges. I'm sure you know that by more, but we've got a lot to react to as you wake up morning. Well, Okay. I'm Rob Finnerty. And I'm Rachel Roller. Of course, that's, that's our top story this morning. Former police officer Derek Chauvin being led away in handcuffs. The jury convicting him on two counts of murder and one count of manslaughter stemming from the death of George Floyd last year. Now, reaction was heard across the country and really the world. Celebrations spilling out into the streets of Minneapolis. People there seen chanting, embracing, and marching through the city. Now, we have a lot to break down with this verdict all morning with legal experts as well as a panel of law enforcement experts. Uh, Jorge Ventura, Robert Gonzalez, and Sheriff David Clark. Also, Mark Garrigus will... Okay, that part, I can uh, stop it there and remove it and go to more clips, okay? Because I've got clips, and there are things that you need to see and hear. If you've heard them already elsewhere, great. But if you haven't heard them, this is good stuff. And so let me see if I can figure out how to do this again. Uh, okay, so I've got this on the desktop, right? And it's called Spirix. So that should be this one. And okay, I'm finding everything. All right, here is Chip Roy. And uh, good to see you all. Texas. Uh, well, Congressman, first, I'd like to get your reaction to the verdict yesterday. Uh, is this what you expected? And how much do you think the jury might have been influenced by people like Maxine Waters, the mob, Antifa, and everything else that was waiting outside the courthouse doors? Yeah, well, as a former federal prosecutor, uh, I've had to sit and watch these kinds of things unfold. And, and I, you know, as a congressman, I actually don't like to opine on it too much. I think justice should be served, and I trust the justice system to do that. Uh, I think that there was a lot of information presented. I think the jury then uh, took that under advisement. I think my concern right now is that what we had is we had a Congresswoman Maxine Waters who is then speaking out uh, in the way you just described, uh, calling for confrontation, calling for taking to the streets. And in fact, the judge uh, presiding over the case appeal that this, this might risk whatever verdict the jury comes back with. Now, that was before the, the verdict was rendered. And I think that judge raised that question right. because of concerns about Congress folk popping off their mouths and saying things they shouldn't be saying about cases they don't know anything about in terms of specific details. Congress and folk and also the president of the United States. Through all the Joe interviews. Biden did the same thing yesterday, too. The, the all right, so there... You have uh, another illustration of this nonsense um, that's going on, and you won't hear that on regular news broadcasts. Uh, shoot, let me.
Yeah, I I uh, shut down. I'm trying to reopen. Let me. Um, am I back? You gotta let me know if I'm back because it says end broadcast, so it looks like I'm back. I accidentally closed the wrong window. So uh, Leonard, if you're there, see what does it say? Nine oh two. Let me know because I can't. It says end broadcast, so I don't want to do that. Oh, there's Yvonne too. Um, yeah, I think I accidentally shut down the broadcast. I'm looking to see if Leonard is there. Hopefully, Leonard will come back on. And greetings. I'm glad, Yvonne, you're there. Did I get uh, disconnected on Periscope? Uh, let me know. I am uh, continuing, and I'm going to try to keep going where I left off here. So, um, yeah, Leonard said, you must. we lost you. You must have shut down the broadcast. So. Actually, what I can do is, where's my phone? I can text Leonard and let him know uh, that I'm on. Yep, there's his uh, text. Let me put that. Uh, uh, go back, check now. And hopefully he'll, uh, he'll join us. All right, so I'm going to continue. Yeah, Periscope is up. Okay, thanks. All right, so I was playing. Uh, I don't know how long you've been on with us, Yvonne, because um, I don't see you when I'm doing it from the uh, from YouTube. I have to figure out how to do that. I, I also I, I need to give a call and uh, talk to Lou about all this. Um, I'm going to share another uh, another video file, and I think I can do that. Yeah, I want to. Go to Emerald, and this is on Newsmax. Robinson, who is and standing so by in Washington. Emerald, good morning. Good morning, Rob. Well, good. we're getting more reaction here in the Capitol regarding yesterday's verdict for Derek Chauvin, guilty on all three counts. But what we're hearing consistently from Democrats is what is forming into what a new talking point, very consistent messaging for the, from them, saying that this is not justice. They're calling it accountability and saying that they expect more to be done. That's something that uh, Vice President Kamala Harris hinted at last night when she took the podium in the East Room. Today, we feel a sigh of relief. Still, it cannot take away the pain. A measure of justice isn't the same as equal justice. This verdict brings us a step closer, and the fact is, we still have work to do. Yeah. We still. Oh, we're in heaven now. We have nothing else to do. Everything's perfect. There still protest, uh, though not it's at the scale there would have been last night if there had been a not guilty verdict. And look, of course, going forward, as was hinted at last uh, hour, there will clearly be more unrest possibilities based on the sentencing, which will come in weeks. And we're learning more about this judge, Judge Cahill, uh, who will be doing the sentencing, conducting the sentencing of Derek Chauvin. We learned that uh, he used to work for Senator uh, Amy Klobuchar before taking the bench. And one of his more defining uh, judgments is when he refused to uh, try BLM protesters who had organized protests at the Mall of America. So All right. So that's I cut that off. Um and I'm just putting in a new uh, text here. Let's see. Can I do that on here? Is this on YouTube? Okay. Put it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. No, it seems to be there. Uh, and yeah, I, according to my uh, board, I can see both YouTube and Periscope are up. Here's the one for, uh, although Leonard isn't on Periscope. But I put it on there. Yeah, I accidentally closed a window that I thought was just a single window, and it was the actual feed. So I've never done that before. Always something new, right? All right, so on that, we hear a little bit of the battles going on. Um, this is a longer clip, but there are quite a few details on here. Here. Let's see if we this one up. Chip Roy of Texas about that, uh, the, the lack of sequestering the jury. By the way, this was three weeks. It wasn't, you know, the O.J. Simpson trial went on for months and months. 
Uh, sequestering a jury yeah, for three weeks, sorry. especially in 2021. You've got the president, Joe Biden, out there talking about how he hopes the trial will, will come down, the verdict, rather. And then you've got Maxine Waters in there stirring everything up on Saturday night. You think the jury wasn't aware of that? Please. The jury was well aware of that. This is 2021, right? This is not, as the congressman said, 1950, fine. Uh, sequestering a jury was much easier. Um, by the way, Emerald, Kamala Harris is, is plainly wrong. Justice was done. He was convicted of many, including some of our legal experts, say that he was overcharged. That same judge, Judge Cahill, didn't want the third-degree murder charge. Before the trial started, uh, he wanted that third-degree murder charge dropped. Typically, that's used for drug dealers. Um, who sell drugs to someone, and then someone dies, but the drug dealer, of course, wasn't planning on killing that individual person. That's typically... On here, they're doing the same thing with law that they do with medicine. There's such a thing as, um, I think it's called off... I'm trying to remember the right term, the right phrase, to say when they use a drug in a different way, it's like saying off table or off counter or something like that. And uh, cause I remember when I was having blood issues after my first heart surgery, uh, that was an issue. They said, we're gonna use it an off shelf or off counter or whatever uh, use because uh, we think it's gonna help you. Well, here they come up with uses of, you know, uh, different legal issues and uh, like he just said, here, let's back that up again. Where is he? Listen to this. Um, who sell drugs to someone and then someone dies, but the drug dealer, of course, wasn't planning on killing that individual person. That's typically when we see that. Um, so was Chauvin overcharged? You know, who knows? I'm not a lawyer, but he was found guilty on everything. So justice was done. But I'll tell you what. Yeah, they throw charges at you. And these charges like that apply to a drug dealer who sells drugs to another dealer, who sells to a user, the user dies, and now they nail the dealer, you know, with the murder charge. I get that. I, I get that. I understand that that can, can make sense. But look how we're doing this with the judicial system. That does not make sense. They're throwing charges and making them stick, which is like, what we did in the previous administration uh, when trying to, in some cases, uh, create guilt for things that weren't even real. You know, like the Russia hoax. Just amazing what's going on here. And again, I'm seeing all this stuff biblically, exegetically. Um, that turns into government. And it's because governments started out uh, theological. And that's why theology is the queen of the sciences. All the other sciences are connected to it. Anyway, I digress. Let's hear this long clip here. Kamala and Joe Biden, they were out there fast, hour and a half later, talking about the verdict. We still haven't heard them say anything about the border. But, the, but we're going to hear more from Democrats, not just Kamala Harris, but clearly, yes, from this administration in this vein, saying that justice was not completely served and calling for more action. This yeah. is what they're going to use in wrapping into uh, policy changes and also probably now also at the Department of Justice, but clearly also on the Hill trying to push um, some police reform bills. Oh, absolutely. The, the George Floyd police reform bill. Let's welcome in the rest of our... Oh, really sure. to Newsmax. Uh, Amanda Mackey is with us. She is a Republican strategist and an attorney and constitutional law attorney and Newsmax contributor. Amir Benno is here as well. Uh, I just want to play you uh, th this. I want to get your reaction to Derek Chauvin's reaction as the verdict was being read. I want you, you know, we've seen this guy wearing a mask for the last three weeks. Uh, I, honestly, I, my gut, I thought he was surprised that he was guilty on all three counts. Take a look. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. Now, obviously, any defendant, Amir, as you know, is taking time to process what's going on. Uh, and that just played out like that. His eyes were wandering around almost as if to say, hey, what do you mean? I'm, I'm Derek Chauvin. I'm not I'm not guilty. What would you make of that yesterday? Oh, Amir, we're having a little difficulty with your uh, your audio. Uh, Amanda, same question. 
you know, I said this before in the earlier segment, I had been studying his body language, right. and I really think he just has this deer in a headlights look. But of course, given the circumstances, you know, your body goes through shock when you have a traumatic event like this. Uh, and, you know, it could be just the sign of denial uh, in his eyes. But I don't think he was really shocked given the enormity of the public, you know, really the mob rule around this, you know. By the way, are we hearing this same news with these same viewpoints on ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, uh, MSDNC, whatever they call all the funny names for all that stuff, uh, CNN? Etc. I don't think so. It was just too much pressure. There was the, just the high-pitched nature of this really made it impossible for the verdict to be any other way. I talked to some folks in law enforcement yesterday, and they said, no way he gets the murder sentence. I mean, manslaughter, yeah, I can see that, but no way the murder charges, and, and, and they were. I mean, he was found convicted on all the charges, uh, and I think that is shocking to the law enforcement community as a whole uh, and to seasoned attorneys who think that that was an over sentencing. So um, he may have thought that, but I think in the end, everyone recognizes that just the, the nature of this and the public enormous public pressure, not only from Congresswoman Maxine Waters, but the president of the United States made it really challenging to sure. see it any Pleasure. other way. Let's, uh, let's go there. Joe Biden, less than an hour and a half after the verdict came down, was out there making this all about race. Take a listen. And this takes acknowledging and confronting head on the rarities that exist in policing and in our criminal justice system more broadly. They add reverb to make him sound more serious. You know, I couldn't agree, disagree with the president more, Amir. You know, I think the comparisons to the Rodney King situation, the O.J. Simpson trial, uh, which were all about race, those should stop today. Uh, in 1995, when O.J. Simpson uh, got off, uh, half of America wanted him to be innocent, half of America wanted to be guilty, uh, and, and that's the way that played out. No one wanted Derek Chauvin to be innocent. I think some people thought he was overcharged. I think some people struggled with the, that kind of martyred image of a— uh, of George Floyd, but I don't think there was a group of people. I haven't met anybody that was like, you know what? The 929 video, Derek Chauvin was right. Uh, also with the OJ Simpson trial, we didn't burn the country down and loot and do all of these other weird marches and uh, things against law enforcement, like shooting officers and, you know, uh, Molotov tailing or, uh, their squad cars. It's just crazy uh, the difference now from what it was back in the day, let's say around 1990. Look, they made this all about race. Uh, they made it about race. The, the president weighed in. It's totally inappropriate for the president to have done that in any criminal case. Don't, don't forget, when Donald Trump made a remark about how General Flynn was a good person, the left went wild about the fact that he's injecting himself into a case. Here you have the president of the United States not talking about the character of a defendant, but talking about the merits of the case. Right. Uh, and there's still three police officers in this case yet to be prosecuted. And we have Kimberly Potter, the police officer uh, in, in uh, who, who tased uh, Dante Wright, who is going to be prosecuted for the same manslaughter charge. And here you have uh, the person who holds the highest government post in the land coming in and weighing in on what he thinks the, the correct outcome should be. And I have to suspect that he was not following the evidence in this case. Really what the evidence be damned, it doesn't matter. It's a problem for our justice system. Uh, blind and impartial justice no longer exists. Okay, uh, I think I have one or two more uh, and hopefully uh, a couple of short clips. I'm trying to see which one this actually is, but I'm gonna remove this one and add, let me try and add at least one more little clip. I couldn't believe the way things are being presented at this point by the mainstream media. Uh, yeah, I think this one is the next one. Emerald, how much do you think the jury was affected by everything happening outside the courthouse? 100%. That's why when we would talk to these legal experts, and I talked to a lot of them, I talked Backing that up, listen to this. No longer exists. Emerald, how much do you think the jury was affected by everything happening? 100%. 
That's why when we <laughs> talk to these legal experts, and I talk to a lot of them, I talk to a lot of former prosecutors, our current prosecutors, a lot of uh, law enforcement, and they all consistently felt that he would not be charged with the, the two more serious charges, possibly the manslaughter. And I, I consistently felt that uh, that he would he would be charged on all fronts based on the mob rule and based on the fear that you know those jury they've seen how people have been harassed in this country who do not conform to the mainstream media narrative. And I, I knew this was going to happen, but you know people were were working out of a place of rationale right. and objectivity. And that didn't exist here. George Floyd, by the way, spent his first night in prison uh, last night in jail. Uh, he was on suicide watch, which is very common, but it's not going to be a, a, a warm, cozy environment for, uh, for I'm sorry, uh, Derek Chauvin. I think I said George Floyd. Uh, Derek Chauvin uh, on suicide watch. Uh, quickly, I just want to play this soundbite from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, she thank you, George, uh, for that. Take a listen. One more time. Oh, wow. Thank you, George Floyd. Thank you. For sacrificing your life for justice. Oh for being there to call out to your mom. How, how heartbreaking was that? Hi, mom. To call out for your mom. I can't breathe. I mean, we've known this, but she is utterly out to lunch, Amanda. What'd you make of that? Her office uh, tweeted out. <laughs> was a, she uh, drunk? I, I literally, and Maxine Waters, she's 82 years old. I just, I don't know what is happening with the Democratic Party right now, but they, Pelosi sent out a tweet yesterday afternoon saying George Floyd should be alive today. Uh, his family's calls for justice and murder were heard around the world. He did not die in vain. She was quick to try and walk back those comments. But the people behind her, you hear them, they were like, what? It made no sense. I, I mean, she really did appear to be drunk. But uh, the way that I view this is that uh, they can't acknowledge any of the faults in what George Floyd presented himself with. Clearly, he was under the influence. Clearly, he had fentanyl in his system. He had methamphetamines in his system. He resisted arrest. They don't want to acknowledge any of this. They just- Oh no, George Floyd is a wonderful American, an ideal citizen who really is somebody that we all want as our neighbor and friend and his brother too, and their whole family. I think that's the way every neighbor should be. And, uh, and, and when the police do something to them, we should go there with Molotov cocktails and uh, whatever other weapons and things we can do and screaming and yelling because that's what really needs to happen in this country and in the world. I just want to make him a martyr because I think they, they think that this helps their cause. Right. I think they see race as a way to win. <laughs> um, and, and I thought they're going to be pushing and promoting and it's sad that they are really exploiting a situation both families suffered okay derek chauvin's family is going to be suffering so is the the floyd family yeah. um they've attempted to make the floyd family whole a 27 million dollar settlement civil settlement I want mine. and now uh convictions on all three charges so you know uh, nancy pelosi just sounds a little uh, beyond drunk she sounds tone deaf and she sounds a little silly the, the uh, other families say well you died for this or, yeah exactly and the other families that suffered of course uh those families that lost businesses and, and homes to rioting and looting which went on for months and months and democrats didn't mention it at all at the time panel that's all the time and we, we have. keep seeing this parallel just with jesus christ you know george floyd i've seen that time and time again the, from these different, the, the, different the, lawmakers they, they've made him a martyr absolutely oh yeah and we now have george floyd and jesus christ in the same phrase how about that for just pieces just ridiculous all right, let me uh, cut that out. Let's see, remove that one, and there we go. So um, a couple of clips there just to also, oh, uh, one more I think I'm going to do is on uh, critical race theory. Let me see. Uh, wait a second. What all do I have? There's just so much stuff here. I was going to talk about a couple of things. By the way, also about our exegesis text. Uh, I guess there's so much going on, I can't get to it all. Here is, you know, the, this text that we're going to get into. I have pictures of it. Um, and uh, let's see, where do I have that handy? I'm not going to show you that at this moment because I think I need to show you. Let me check this one, uh, one more text here. Let me see what this ends with here at 310. Is this the one with Jesus? Come on, from months 
Let's address that all at the panel. The time so we, we keep have. seeing this parallel just with Jesus Christ. Okay, okay good. That's the one we saw. Uh, here is, all right, this is one more because it's on critical race theory. Oops, I don't want it to be in QuickTime Player. I want it to be uh, from our streams. Uh, check this out. Uh, this is more on critical race theory, and we will get into that next time as well. Uh, or and one you know of the what, Rob, Well, yeah, and I thought it was just kind of amazing, but speaks to the area, the DMV area, that um, Fairfax County Schools actually sent out an email yesterday to uh, the parents of children in their county schools talking about the verdicts and how justice was done, but they have so much more to do and learn from this and providing resources because they essentially know that their teachers and students are traumatized and need some kind of help through this Chauvin trial and, and verdict. And, and, I, and then you know that's who's teaching your children and they're teaching this stuff in school. Uh, race theory. Also, I, I should mention, um, Amir, the, so George Floyd's brother uh, yesterday, he said, this is his quote, today we are all able to breathe again. I, I think, and I'm not, I have no ties to the, the Las Vegas Raiders, but I think what Mark Davis there, Al Davis's kid, was trying to, trying to put out was he was found guilty on all three charges. He wasn't found guilty on one out of three, two out of three, all, all guilty on all three. He's going away. Um, you know, short of taking him out back and, and shooting him, uh, Derek Chauvin, justice was served. That's what they're trying to say. That's right. I mean, why are people so offended by everything? I mean, that's just the culture we live in now. Every, yeah. you, anything you say is going to be insensitive to somebody. Um, I mean, people need to take a step back and, uh, you know, and I guess it depends on who's making the declaration, who's making the statement. You know, if it's the person that's good for you. You know, if it's the Raiders who make the statement, then suddenly because they're not part of uh, of the woke uh, culture, uh, I mean, <laughs> part of the circle that's out there, you know, protesting in the streets, then they're not allowed to make the statement. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I just think uh, I, I just think we're all so darn sensitive right now, and we're being we're being calibrated, whether we know it or not, subconsciously to be sensitive. I mean, why can't you just scroll through after something that was a big moment for criminal justice in this country and a big moment for black America, white America? Why can't you just say this is this is a good thing for America and let's and let's move on? Um, Amanda, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how long you think Chauvin could go away. You're an attorney. Um, these three. OK, that's the end of that one. I was just going to send. This uh, uh, um, thing, there's a question. Oops, Periscope didn't get the comment. It was probably filtered. Periscope filters anything that looks like spam. Huh. All right. Well, I'm going to put this up on, um, on the uh, YouTube part. Leonard asked if I can get copies. Let me go to that. Um, and I, I asked if it's uh, copies of the exegesis thing. The exegesis thing that I was planning here let me uh let me close i got too many windows going here <laughs> i don't want to push the wrong button this time and uh cl and you know cancel the 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 broadcast um let's see here can i close that all right so on uh youtube i guess i can't close that um let's see what did it say copies uh okay maybe my um, yeah, maybe my comment was too long and, and Periscope uh, chopped it off. But uh, on the other one here, it says copies of the exegesis book pages. There are only two, and I'm thinking we can screenshot them or something. But uh, what they are, maybe I will go to them right this second here. Let me see if I can show this. I just have to find them because I've got so many different uh, new folders. Uh, the one that has, yeah, here they are. All right, let me see if I can pull this one up on stream on StreamYard and then you guys can see it. So we're hanging on a little longer, but what the heck, right? Uh, here we go. Application window. Sorry all this stuff takes so long. It's really crazy trying to figure all this stuff out. StreamYard picks. Uh-oh. I don't think this is the right way either. Oh, I see why. Ooh. 
open that up. Let me try it again here. I don't think it's working. Let me see. Well, yeah, it's showing that, but then I can't open those pictures. I can only show it to you. See there, it's a table of contents and the intro pages. I don't know if you can read that or not. And I don't know now if I can escape. Oh, good. I was able to get from big to small. Um, I will try one more time here to see if I can't get those pictures. Uh-oh. Let me see here. Cancel that stop screen. Ah, here I am again. I think I stopped my screen. I'm telling you, I'm having more technical difficulties. Uh, it's part of the teaching of what I'm teaching. <laughs> the, the more weird stuff I the more everything gets and more difficult. Let me see one more time here. I'm going to put these on the desktop. Let me put them on here and see if I can't go to the desktop. Cancel this, share. Okay, screen share. Let's see. Where is the share? One more time. I'm getting close now. Except that I have two selected here and I can't separate them. There we go. All right. And at this rate, oh gosh. It's still not giving me the desktop. I don't know. Oh, well, no, entire screen. Desktop local. Yeah, look, we're having this, this problem. Instead, you're seeing this kind of stuff instead of seeing what I want you to see. Uh, let me see if I can do this. If I open this up. Well, it shows it as a preview, but I don't know how to get it on. Let's see. Let me go over here. Oops. No, I don't want to stop screen. Stop that. Okay, share. Try it. one more share screen deal. It's a little complicated. I keep trying, and it keeps giving me a hard time. There. Finally. Okay. This, uh-oh, is it showing, though, on? Yeah, there it is. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And let me close this thing. Sorry, I got so many stupid things in the way. Um, I'm going to try and make it bigger. I want to see what that does. It doesn't really change the text. Um, that is the table of contents. And uh, after that, the name is an introduction. And so I'm going to try to give you guys, you know, information from this book, but I'm not going to be, you know, copying every page of the book. And in fact, if anybody wants to try to contact Dallas Theological Seminary uh, and or if I get around to it to see if the book is still available, the text, uh, that would be my, you know, hope and guess. And uh, let me see if I can uh, get out of that by just pushing this button. Um, and show you again the book and the fact that all I did was take a picture of what you this way it's bigger isn't it this is actually a little bit bigger and I could hold it like that and then uh, after a minute or two where it says part three uh, one and two get you know the rest of it so that in two shots, people could, you know, basically see all the information there. And the second page is what I said is the introduction. After that, I'm not going to be copying all these pages. But this gives you an idea of this text that I think is really useful for solidifying the whole purpose and reason. Let me see if I can get that straight. There we go. Skillful exegesis of the New Testament is essential blah, blah, blah. And of course, this is New Testament only, um, you know, because it's Greek exegesis. So he checked their site and couldn't find it. Interesting. Well, I will have to call them at some point and see what's going on. StreamYard.com sharing. I'm going to hit stop sharing. If we get disconnected,
I'll have to catch you on Monday, but let me stop this and see what happens. All right. I'm still there, right? Yeah. I don't know what stream yard was sharing a window with what. Um, and I'm telling you, I'm really uh, challenged a little bit uh, on some of this technology when I'm trying to do everything at once. But uh, bottom line, um, we saw tonight some of the things, and that's why I stopped at at point 14. Uh, we're still about, let's see, 15 through 23. So we've got another eight or nine points. And then we will go from there. Let me see what the next thing is because it switches to sensitivity and hyper. That's where we're going. And virtue demands poise. And you can see a couple times I halfway lost it tonight. This is getting to be uh, a challenge for me. So, and I think you relate. And so anyway, we'll uh, keep working on all this stuff. And I'm hoping that soon enough, we will have hit everything we could and milked everything out of the doctrines of uh, the verses in in the entire epistle, this short 25 verse letter of Philemon. And from there, we'll really be able to focus on that, uh, that one book. Yeah, it is something, isn't it? Having to learn how to do all this. And thanks for uh, you know, for bearing with me because it's got to be obnoxious and boring, but I guess that's what we do, right? With our friends, we kind of follow along and hang in there. Uh, in fact, I, I can kind of remember when Lou and Yvonne were trying StreamYard and could be in different rooms in the house or garages or dogs or different stuff going on, I guess, in different houses. It was pretty funny because you guys were trying to figure it out. Uh, let's see, what do you say? It's not just something different. Not as in, uh, yeah, well, the idea that there are so many features, you know, neat things to be able to do. And so the fact that I'm already crazed doing all this stuff, like I said, we continue in Philemon so much more that I couldn't fit it all on this one title board. <laughs> so uh, you saw what I meant. And uh, I don't know if Yvonne was on early or not, but. Uh, we really are all over the place and covered a lot of stuff. And as I said, this board, I think is really a fun one, uh, that we did on like the phrase on the bottom. She is he, he is who, who is me. And now, which pronoun, um, do we have to argue over the, uh, gender and all that stuff in fortunately, in the scriptures, all of that is delineated, so nobody has to argue. You just have to exegete. So there's my <laughs> little comment. So anyway, um, I guess uh, in closing, we should close in prayer. I want to mention that I haven't heard anything yet from uh, my buddy Earl Buffington, who may have had uh, the prostate surgery yesterday. Please keep him in your intercessory prayer. That's Earl, and uh, that whatever is going on, that he is in great hands and that the Lord is uh, taking care of the details, I believe that will be true. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, Yvonne says uh, to go back and catch the uh, early part, and I would definitely recommend that for anyone. The, the what is it called? Intestinal fortitude <laughs> to put up with. Well, we've been going at this for about two hours now, and uh, but there's some good stuff. So again, remember everybody, there's a lot to pray about. I mean, everything on this list, all this government and courts and law enforcement and military and, and churches and schools, it's nuts. And in my case, please pray that I continue to do well. I feel great. So if you've been praying for me, I guess the prayers are working and you need to know that I'm doing really well. I'm amazed. I was so uh, really paralyzed on Sunday morning uh, with that, uh, what do they call it again? Sciatica, sciatic nerve, you know, all that nonsense. That was nasty. But apparently I'm recovering 
really well and quickly. Of course, I had help on Sunday. Then I had help on Monday from my nutritionist, uh, kinesiologist, chiropractor guy in LA who told me to see my chiropractor and, and uh, masseuse, which I did yesterday. And they helped me and showed me stuff. Boy, that sciatic nerve, man, that is a real pain in the... Mm -hmm. So, uh, but hopefully I'll be good to go now. So uh, let's close in prayer and connect. Please have a safe and wonderful weekend. Uh, you know, the world can be going to hell in a handbasket, but we're going to heaven through solid exegesis. Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. So in, uh, in that case, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again. Thank you for uh, superintending. And I don't happen with this. I have two broadcasts tonight, or if they're linked together or what. Uh, I hope they work out together. I'll have to see for myself because we got disconnected. Um, but thank you for helping me to be able to stay on course and be able to show the things that hopefully you really want us to be thinking about and to know. And uh, it's really great that you always encourage us in a personal way. And so I hope that we'll also, through this study tonight, we saw about impersonal love, that our integrity can be reflected to one another and that we can encourage each other. And um, I feel very encouraged now. I feel I've got really, you know, wonderful friends, uh, you know, rooting for me. And, and it's amazing to know that at the very highest level, uh, is the triunity itself, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And that those are the most important things, and they truly are the things that make the difference and can make things get better and go well. So thank you for all these things. We ask them, B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in Christ's name, amen. And voila. <laughs> so uh, a salute, cheers. And hope to see you on Monday. And Leonard, maybe we'll be in touch or something. Also, uh, Yvonne, if you you know can connect with me or whatever, please do so via uh, whatever it's called through the Twitter messages and all that. And 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 maybe I should try and get a hold of uh, of Lou as well. I gotta see what he's up to and talk to him about all this stuff. So, all right, thanks, Leonard, and good night. You guys have a good one, and we'll call it a night. And one more salute and thank you. See you soon. Good night.